everyone. Uh, really happy to be here. And um, it seems that we're now having some conversations with this projection technology, which may or may not work. So, um, so I am Audrey Tong, Taiwan's Digital Minister in charge of social innovation. I'm really happy to be here and share with you some thoughts around social innovation and especially participatory um, civil IoT, as we call it. Uh, and if you're interested in the materials, all the materials are um, uh, ci.taiwan, ci.taiwan.gov.tw. Um, it seems that it's stuck for some reason, so uh, can we switch to HTML or something? technology. Um, so anyway, here we go. It's, so that's the website. And as you can see, um, we have put all the relevant information related to the CI project, the civil IoT project, into this uh, unified uh, website address. And we do this not just for the civil IoT, but also for AI Taiwan, for SI Taiwan, which is uh, social innovation, uh, and also for Smart Taiwan, and also for Bio Taiwan, and so on. And this shows a, a very different approach of uh, policy-making context, because it is not just the central administration or the municipalities. This is not just about one ministry or some other agency. This is a single uh, website that outlines all the efforts, including the municipalities and uh, the various ministries involved, and everybody can update their latest development on this bulletin board and for everybody to share. And so I'll be mostly explaining um, the policy making approach, the collaborative policy making approach that we have done in the past couple of years leading to the single IoT Taiwan project, which is a shared evidence-based um, platform for everybody to contribute. Um, mostly uh, it's four areas and um, the municipal um, agencies have already shared brilliantly about how this enables a open API-based um, connection for everybody who are working in the front lines, who, are, uh, who want to have a at a glance um, report of where exactly is the weather going, how the roads has been broken, and what kind of um, ideas or information are on the few reports there are. These are all aggregated in the, this corner. But in the um, background, <coughs> there's also ongoing efforts to collect air information, to collect uh, water quality information, as well as earthquake prevention data. And all of this is aggregated into the National High Speed Computing Center uh, using a cloud infrastructure that allows for people to contribute uh, their um, insights and the resources that they have uh, to the same platform. But my main um, topic for this talk is um, not exactly the features now, which we've only increased, and you can uh, check it all out on the CI uh, website anyway, but on how those ideas came to be and how we incorporated the civil society and the social sector's innovations using drones, using um, blockchain, using the cutting edge technologies that, frankly speaking, the uh, administration um, is maybe only a late adopter and waiting for this uh, civil society to surface their um, ideas that can only be done in a way if it's uh, fast and if we make the civil society feel that they are welcome to share their latest ideas in the both the civil IoT, the disaster recovery and also in the uh, substantive data sharing. And so this is literally my office. My office is in the Jingbo, uh, near the Jingbo Flower Market, uh, near the Central Dian Park uh, in Taipei. Uh, it's called the Social Innovation 
lab. Uh, it used to be a Taiwan Air Force base, but it's converted into this playground-ish uh, office and it's co-created by a hundred or so of social innovators. And this particular soccer field is drawn by people with Down syndrome. It turns out that they're brilliant artists who see the world through a different lens. And so it, it conveys this atmosphere that everybody is able to contribute. Now, there are people working on various cutting-edge technology there, and we provide the sandbox in which that they can show their latest innovations and think of uh, use of public good uh, along with other people. For example, a few months ago, there's some self-driving tricycles here, um, and they just lift with people and interact with people, and they drive kind of slowly, so it doesn't hurt anyone if they crash into anything, but it gets people accustomed with the idea of what we call open innovation. Because these creatures uh, from the MIT Media Lab, they're not just open source and open hardware, so anyone who would know anything about programming or electric engineering can change the mood light uh, into a face or something like that to show how they're feeling toward our world. But also the data it gathers is released as open data, so we can collectively form a new norm to interact with these creatures. Um, in the um, peaceful times, like during strolling through the Jebel flower market, many people attending the hackathon thought of it as a way of you know, helping you carry the pots of orchids or whatever as you stroll past the Jebel flower market, and by the end you can hop on it and it can drive you home. But in times of disaster, in times of uh, fire, in times of various other ways, they can be instantly uh, repurposed and reused. Um, as uh, ways to do um, scouting, as ways to distribute goods in a way that uh, doesn't harm uh, the people on the ground. And so all those innovations are there for people to act upon, so they don't patent or control or in, in other ways um, colonize the technology, but rather opens up the technology for everybody to see. And so this space, the Taiwan Air Force Base, perhaps fittingly, became one of the premier uh, training ground for drone operators, for uh, unmanned vehicles uh, to test various uh, interactions and possible drills uh, that they have around uh, maybe a explosion accident or maybe um, a um, earthquake and things like that and using uh, good carrying drones. <coughs> People here just um, rehearse various ways of um, and then vehicles in a way that shows the people how exactly that works in a simulated fashion. <clears throat> and so, more incidents about the Apple TV. Um, this is totally not a paid advertisement by Apple, even though I did work with Apple for six years before joining the cabinet. Um, anyway, um, yeah, since it's broken again. Can we, can we switch to HTML, please? Just a second while we switch to more reliable technology. Um, all the wireless engineers I know prefers wired connection, um, and so <laughs> because they are simply more reliable. Or not? You know what, um, let's just forget about the slides. Um, it's obviously not working. 
So, <coughs> so I'm going to, to uh, spare you the rest of the visuals and just talk about uh, some basic principles. Um, so um, the idea of regulatory co-creation or the sandbox um, underlies the formation of the civil IoT project. Um, the sandbox system, which is installed in sandbox.org.tw, outlines our main way of engaging with the civil society when they think of a new um, drone or a new invention that is runs counter to the uh, current regulation or the current law system. Uh, and on sandbox.org.tw, you can see many applications, people who come up with innovations <coughs> to solve interesting uh, public issues, uh, but are currently held back by laws or regulations. Oh, here we go. Uh, is it working? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so then, um, simply by declaring that this invention currently breaking some regulations or some laws, um, it could be around AI, it could be around unmanned vehicles, it could be using a part of um, 5G or experimental broadband that is currently not allowed for uh, industry or commercial use. Anything uh, can be challenged on sandbox.org.tw. And there's hundreds of cases where the government, the central administration, responds to the real needs of the municipalities who really want to relax some of the existing regulations, but can be done in a way that uh, shows everybody that this is actually safe and it actually increases uh, the common good. And so the sandbox or GTW is the front end to all applications, but to, in the back end, we have various different uh, ministries in charge of various regulations and they are designed to be broken. So for example, the platform economy um, and financial technology are the NDC, the National Development Council and the uh, Minister of Finance uh, respectively. And now uh, before end of this year, we're working with the legislation to pass the sandbox of the Aman vehicles or UVs. And uh, unlike in every other country, where the Ministry of Transportation or Communication takes care of those unmanned vehicles. Here in Taiwan, the Ministry of Economy takes these ideas of unmanned vehicles. So because of that, we don't distinguish between drones and automated vehicles that are on the road or in the sea. You can have hybrid vehicles that drive and then um, vertically take off, or ships that um, converts into a bus uh, that are self-driving applying to the sandboxes. And we are already receiving a lot of interest from the Taipei City, New Taipei City, Taichung, and Gaoshan City about deploying these uh, innovative vehicles in a way that serves the public good and especially around disaster recovery. And the way it works is this. Anyone can apply to break a law uh, or a regulation that is owned by the ministry or challenge any regulation uh, from any other ministry by submitting the proposal. And after a multi-stakeholder conversation, if it is potentially uh, to the public good, then they are given uh, one year to experiment and to um, show people how it works in the real world. Um, and now it's broken again. So anyway, uh, oh here we go. Um, so the right. So the idea here very simply is that everybody gets a year after the initial uh, proposal period to operate under a law or regulation to the innovators liking and with the blessing of the municipal uh, support. And after a year of testing, if it's not a good idea, then we uh, thank the investors for paying the tuitions for everyone. In exchange, we get a data sharing and a risk assessment so that the new innovators can try a different angle. But this, if this is deemed a good idea by the civil society and by the people, the citizens, then they're given maybe one extra year to test on another municipal um, area or expand their testing range or speed. And up to two years of testing will result in a final verdict of whether we incorporate this innovation in the civil IoT or other support system or not. If this is blessed by the people saying this really is a good idea, then all the regulations that it challenges must be readjusted to the version that the innovators writes the new regulation. Of course, if this is a law challenge, if this is a law change, then the legislators in the parliament need to have a substantial discussion, which can last up to four years. But during those four years, the innovator essentially gets a monopoly by allowing them to continue the innovation, including the business model, uh, under the uh, new version of the law to their liking uh, during the sandbox. 
And once the legislators are okay with this new spectrum, with this new field, with this new kind of eco and new kind of use and things like that, of course competitors enter the field and we then successfully co-create regulations um, with innovators. Now, the key to make this work, and if you're interested in taking this back to your country to make this work, the key to this is the regional innovation system. Because people cannot, um, if they cannot see those creatures or these new inventions in action, then people cannot make sense of what exactly how it, how it looks like. And so every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., I'm in the social innovation lab for everybody to meet me in my office hour to have a substantial discussion, even a demonstration of their technologies that I then record and publish the transcript for everybody, including the municipalities and investors and whomever else to see. And then um, every other Tuesday or so, I also tour around Taiwan to all the different potential counties or cities or municipalities that are willing to experiment with those cutting edge technologies that are willing to make full use of the open data and API we offer on the civil IoT platform and meet with the social innovators. I think the left one is Hualien. And when I do that, people can dial in from, say, Taidong or any other corner, uh, and they meet together in a kind of virtualized uh, conference room to actually see those innovations in action. And always the 12 ministries related to social innovation are invited to the social innovation lab in a kind of large room. They connect through projectors and see those local social innovators through my eyes. So it's just me who travels, but 12 different ministries are in the social innovation lab where we have some like good drink and good food. We have a resident chef that opens until 11 p.m. every day. So it creates a kind of um, ideation atmosphere, a fun atmosphere, so for people to collaborate. And they know that the ministry will always absorb any risk if they <laughs> propose something innovative and risky uh, and it goes wrong, it's all my fault. But if there is uh, some good ideas and it's to everybody's credit because all the transcript is published online. And in this environment, previously, if the innovators have proposed their ideas, maybe to one bureau or another, or to one ministry or the other, it's very, um, potentially likely for the public service to say, but I need to consult with some other ministry, and then they will send another text, and then another text, and then throughout all those documents, not only is the, uh, the time takes uh, that is longer than the innovators expected, but also uh, contextual information may be lost during the transmission. But by getting all the 12 ministries into the same room, literally, and the people they want to consult are sitting next to them, literally, uh, it's very difficult to delay or postpone the ideation process. So whenever anyone from the local social innovation says, but now we need automated vehicles to help um, agriculture, um, um, you know, delivery, um, transportation, on um, disaster recovery, then all the relevant ministries are there and they just talk among themselves and very quickly offer a answer which we require, um, you know, at most two weeks after each uh, regional innovation meeting. So that, I think, is the trick of making this work and that then adds back to the collective evidence gathering that is the civil IoT system. And finally, I would like to show you a picture. Um, which is part of the civil IoT system also. This is um, the airbox, which is people around Taiwan donating um, their balcony or their school or whatever and purchase those very cheap, less than 100 US dollars uh, sensors that detects the air quality. And as you can see, there's um, by now more than 2,000 points in Taiwan and they all donate these numbers back to the government, to the National High Computing Center. But of course, people, if they have participated in such citizen science before, it actually challenges the legitimacy of our environmental protection agency. So this is kind of rare in Asia because uh, many Asian countries will see this as a threat to legitimacy. But in Taiwan, when we see efforts like this, we decide we cannot beat them, so we join them. And so what we do in a central administration is using uh, partnering with people who own, uh, for example, blockchain technology to take a snapshot of those numbers before they're stored on our national uh, high-speed computing center so that people can know we will not change the numbers the day before the election so they feel much more uh, confident in contributing such information. And second, we partner uh, with um, the research institute 
to make the measurement devices more precise while keeping them as inexpensive as before. And finally, as you can see, this is maybe a map of Taiwan's digital divide. <laughs> so the Environmental Protection Agency set up measurement devices in places where there's less citizen scientists. Uh, our latest plan is to set up a air box here, uh, which is in the middle of the Taiwan Strait. <laughs> I think no citizen scientists will go there, but because of offshore wind turbines, uh, we actually have something that generates electricity in that point and can report uh, whether the air pollution comes uh, from outside of Taiwan or is uh, domestic in nature. So in conclusion, I think this kind of open innovation of using sandbox to collect people's ideas and sharing data and innovation with the whole world in a way that anyone anywhere in the world can just download it from GitHub to put those self-driving vehicles together to join the civil IoT uh, data gathering platform. I think this is one of um, Taiwan's main offer to the world by solving not only our domestic social and environmental issues, but documenting precisely how and why of we're doing this through the regional innovation system and also sharing through like the sensor things API and other international standards with people who are like-minded around the world and who can all join Taiwan in bettering the environment and the society. So thank you very much for listening.